Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 18th of July. Thanks very much for joining us. We've switched to monthly meeting cadence. Topics that are on the list are here. Builds, including most recent weeklies and Java 17 and LTS and uh, Contributor Spotlight. Thanks very much. Marcus Winters has been, is now available. Google Summer of Code. Jenkins.io topics, the version docs project, and spring security with Jetty 10 to Jetty 12, Jetty 12 to Jetty EE8 to Jetty 12 EE9, and more. Any other topics you want to add to the list, Bruno? No, thank you, Mark. All right, thank you. Thanks very much for doing the work to prep the agenda. So, Reminder, monthly release cadence, and we're, we're intentionally doing this once a month because Kevin's out, and when he gets back, we'll, we'll consider if we should change. Uh, thanks to the release team, we've released multiple release versions. I'll delete one because we actually didn't release 2.465, or we did release it, but it was burned and there was no content. Yeah. Cool. And then... Jenkins requiring Java 17, it's feeling really good. I've been tracking the issue reports. No, no outrage, no complaints. The switch has happened. So that's great. Um, 2.462 is the next LTS baseline. And I'm going to act as the release lead. And there is already a, a change log and upgrade guide for it. So we can actually look at it and see. Let's do that now, just to be sure that so that people are aware that this is already here and ready for review. So you can review the screenshot here of this is how the change log looks. Uh, it talks about important changes like this common files, commons file upload upgrade, a bunch of UI changes, quite a number of UI improvements and then some nice bug fixes and three entries in the upgrade guide. So very, very looking like a good release, looking, looking very positive. Um, still, we'll have a release candidate next week and uh, special thanks in advance to Jeremy Playow who'll be helping as a shadow on the release candidate. So thanks, Jeremy. And Yes, Bruno, thank you very much for showing the JVM graph. Look at that. We are steadily getting off of Java 8 and steadily getting off of Java 11 and getting people on to Java 17. We're approaching 100,000 installations of Java 17. Thank you. I, we don't have a graph that shows how much we're getting off of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 and its derivatives, but I hope that's improving as well. So one reminder, as part of this transition to Java 17, there are two container images that will, once we stop doing Java 11, those container images will stop as well. One of them is this Alma Linux controller, and the other one is the Red Hat UBI 8 controller. We, we switched for Java 17 to use UBI 9, and so the Java 11 will be the end of life for the UBI 8, con UBI 8 controller. So we've got about 16, about 14 weeks before Java 11 is completely end of life. Any questions there? Uh, no, Mark. Thank you. Okay. And then LTS releases 2.453 is set and... We've got the next, which is 2.462.1 is coming. And it's already in good shape. Special thanks to the team that created Marcus Winters, Marcus Winters uh, Contributor Spotlight. And sincerely, deep thanks to Marcus for being a oh, contributor. Yes. I was fascinated to read his history going all the way back to 2010. And, and like many Jenkins contributors, in his professional job, he manages many different Jenkins controllers. And so he's found it business beneficial to be a Jenkins contributor because it helps his company, SAP. Whoa. 
Nice, nice story. Very, very nice story. And Rajiv Singh's contributor spotlight was two weeks ago. So thanks very much to Rajiv. He continues to mentor in Google Summer of Code, right? Uh, You're right. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. All right. And we're looking forward to a Darren Pope video. I have to retract the John Mark Mason because Alyssa said she'd asked him once already and he politely refused. <laughs> Of course, so, so we, can't, we, can't, we can't make people let us highlight them. That's that's not <laughs> that's not nice. All right. But we've got the, the the thank random contributors have to show that because it's visible right here. Oh, no. Whoops. It's no, not. Oh, oh. How come? <laughs> oh, my. Gmo effect, I guess. Yeah, it's usually right there on that page, isn't it? It is. Maybe it's only on success stories or, oh, no. no, 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 it's not on the individual page, right? It's on the top oh, level page. I'm relieved. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So top level page, here it is. Uh, oh. Okay. That one may not, <laughs> not may not be a great choice of, <laughs> I don't know what that oh, is yeah. though. So that that's an interesting thing. Good. So that's, that's a fun one. We probably want bots to be excluded, but figuring You're out what to be is excluded. a yeah, figuring out what is a bot is difficult because this is not immediately obvious to to automation that it's a bot, right? It, I understand why that would appear. Cool. All right, so that's looking good. Next topic was Google Summer of Code. And Bruno, maybe you want to give us a summary of Google Summer of Code and how it's how it's going and what you're seeing. Okay, so we have five projects uh, this year, which is quite a lot. And uh, two of them are based on the RPU, um, which is done by hand for the time being, and which is pretty time consuming. So the goal there is to automate everything and to update it to recent uh, languages. For example, most of the RPU is written in Groovy and uh, Philip Glantz is transforming that into recent Java which is a good thing. And uh, Dan Young is working on the GitHub part um, of the RPU migration to something newer. So the first half of the project is done. The presentation were good. They happened on the 11th of July. And we have high hopes that they will be finished on time and doing great. The goal there is to simplify Alex, Teams, and other lives by doing things automatically instead of borrowing their time, their precious time. Um, another project is about uh, Jane Kinsens and LLM. The goal there is to have um, a bot uh, that would use uh, LLM in order to help people with various questions about Jenkins. We are getting some information from discourse, uh, community.jenkins.io, from uh, Jenkins.io itself and from Stack Overflow, but I don't know if we will be able to keep this one. Uh, so we'll see. And the boat is working for the time being, but the model hasn't finished its training yet. So we will have to wait a few more weeks become, before it becomes efficient in answering our questions about Jenkins. Um, the one that is the most uh, close to this um, SIG is the infra stats, uh, because for the time being, we have a um, bunch of SVG files uh, and CSVs and things like that. But if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, and if you don't want to spend some time refining the data, finding a way to present it in a good way, well, it will be difficult. So now the new.stats.jenkins.io is the GSOC project I'm talking about. And this make drastic changes in the way the data is presented. And it should be easier way, way easier for anybody to grab some data and have a glimpse at what's happening within the Jenkins ecosystem. How many plugins do we have these days? How many controllers are installed? And on, and on, and on. And frankly, um, I haven't been disappointed yet. All the graphs I have seen are marvelous, really good looking and helpful. It's not finished yet. Uh, the biggest part is yet to come. It's about the Jenkins plugin dependency graph. And it's 
something difficult to code. Um, and for us, I mean, it's not really helpful in the way it is coded now. It's just a bunch of nodes and you don't really know what to do with that. So first of all, we have to understand what's going on and what could be done better, if any. And I think I forgot one, uh, Mark, which is the fifth one. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, open rewrite. Uh, <laughs> I was working oh, on it right. a few minutes ago. Of right. Course. So the goal of this one is to allow um, to have an automatic process to get plugins up to date or more modern. So to help them migrate from uh, GDK 8 to 11, 17, or even 21, to have them have a Jenkins file for those of them that don't have a Jenkins file yet. Um, and lots of other recipes, for example, uh, going from GUnit 4 to GUnit 5, getting rid of Mokito, and on and on and on. There are tons of recipes. So the goal of this tool is to make it as smooth as possible for anyone wanting to create some automatic PRs in order to get the plugins to be more modern. And of course, we are deeply inspired by your uh, tutorials, you know, Mark, the ones you did with Darren, the video and all the documentation on Jenkins.io regarding how to improve a plugin. Very good. So, so this one, and I've seen some of your automated pull requests, so it looks like it's, it's already executing and you're exploring and experimenting. Yes, indeed. Uh, for the time being, the pull request created on that great. I mean, the code is correct, but the title of the PR is vastly generic. Same for the body. And frankly, as a maintainer, I, I'm not anxious to give a review to that kind of PR. It's, it's just written automatic PR. Yes, so what? So we right. are working on getting better title, better content and um, to let people experiment with um, a list of plugins, for example, they want to tackle with not having to put all of them on the command line. And also for the recipes, we are making some cookbooks or you name it, whatever you want, uh, in order to say, OK, I'd like to upgrade these plugins to Java 12, 11, for example. And these plugins, I'd like them to build with GDK 17. So we will create different cookbooks and apply them to uh, various lists of plugins so yes we are still experimenting so maybe i should only run the dry run uh, option for them being because i've been creating without really realizing it uh some pr that should have not been a pr but just commit in my own fork well but but the counter is there are also two plugins that you generally are a maintainer right you're not i yes. you're not generally spamming someone else with with these pull requests, this is not, oh, just send, because I agree with you that if phrasing of the pull request text is bad, it will be rejected even if the change itself is good. You're right. Many, many maintainers simply simply won't tolerate a, a poorly described pull request, especially if they think, if there's any hint that it came from a robot, right? It's hey, please don't waste my time. If you're not going to phrase it well enough for me to understand why you're making the change, then you clearly aren't invested enough for me to consider your change. Right. Good. Okay. And the project should be finished by August 26th or so. So um, August 26th is the is the end of the project? Is the end yeah. of GSOC? Okay, good. It's the end of GSOC if nobody asks for having a, a few weeks uh, more in order to finish. Uh, extensions are possible if the they mentor... are possible. It, but today, and nobody asked for an extension. Great. All right. Good. Anything else you want to highlight on Google Summer of Code? No, thank you, Mark. Okay. So Jenkins.io... Uh, all right. One of the items here is the list of Jenkins donors. So, so Bruno, you want to tell us about this and what you've done here and, and what's happening with this automation? Yes. Uh, we discussed a few weeks ago in the Advocacy and Outreach SIG meeting that uh, we were having some uh, pages about, not some pages, some blocks in the main page of Jenkins Atari regarding our sponsors. Uh, be it giving some money, giving some CPU time, giving some bandwidth, whatever. But there is also another category, which is people or companies giving money to the Jenkins project, thanks to the Linux Foundation, if I'm not mistaken. 
Mm -hmm. So the goal there is to prepare the path to displaying somewhere in Jenkins.io a list or maybe a random uh, donor. And to do that, we use a JSON file that is gathered from the Linux, um, what is it? The Linux Foundation uh, website where people can make donations and cleaned up so that it could be used one of these days um, to generate a block or a page in Jenkins.io. For, for the time being, it's just data and it doesn't show up anywhere in Jenkins.io. But Chris, yes, again, Chris, volunteered to do something about that. So we mm. hope to have a static page generated one of these days. Um, I think it will be after GSOC. Based, and showing... based on the donor data. So using... Yes. Nice. Okay. And there is an automatic um, update TLI manifest that runs every month to gather new data, if any. So that, what this is doing then is this is gathering from, I forget, I, I should remember I think it's the name. LWS or something, no? Linux, well, the one I was thinking of was what is the name of the process, of the service that we use at Linux LWS. Foundation? Oh, oh dear, where? Yeah, there is there is some donation. Oh, oh, I know. We could actually, this Go is easy. Go to Jenkins.io. Of <laughs> course, Jenkins' <laughs> own site, right? Says, hey, if I want to donate, where do I go? Well, I click this and it says donate. And it and says you can LWS. donate here at the Linux Foundation crowdfunding. There it is. Yeah. And, and you see, thank you very much. We've got $12,000 in our current balance. That's wonderful. Great. So that's right. So it's crowdfunding. LFX crowdfunding is the thing. Yes, that the uh, source of truth to Very gather good. the donors. Right. Yeah. From LFX crowdfunding. Excellent. Thank you. Anything you wanted to highlight on these other items? Uh, no, nothing really important on these two ones, except that thank you uh, for making this pull request. Great. All right. Let's take the next topic then, version docs project. So docs.jenkins.io is still up. It is still known to be incomplete, out of date, but the navigation is significantly better than, than the existing site. And thanks, we thank that entirely to Antora and to the, the maintainers who've created this and prepared it. Yes, we know it's still got more work to do. Anything else you wanted to highlight there? No, thank you, Mark. Okay, next was Jetty 10 to Jetty 12 EE8. And we had originally hoped to be ready in July. That doesn't look like it's going to work out. It's going to be August. Um, and it's it's running right now, running on a on branches named prototype mm -hmm. uh, in Jenkins core and many components like stapler. Um, that, that thing is then used, prototype is then used as the basis for the next thing, which is Jetty 12 EE9. And that's um, running on branches named Jakarta. And Bruno, here's one where you've you've been able to create, um, you had created previously at least something that would build a container and I've been using it and I'm very, very, very impressed. I've been using it for about a month, updating it regularly. Now we had some bumps and bruises on the yes. quick start tutorials. Is that, I assume that's still being investigated. No, I sold. Oh, Thanks it is. You, Mark. It is. Oh, okay. Yes. So it's it's solved. So you've got the Spring Security branch now is working. Yes. Thanks to you. You you <sighs> helped me find the core issue, which was me not being able to use a Docker file correctly by using some um, curly brackets in env Docker arguments, which is plainly wrong. So it's solved. Thank you for your help. Okay. So I can I can do it with this is yeah that oh that's that's great okay now are you okay if i actually do that i want to see this go <laughs> uh oh 
So quick start tutorials, right? And I do a git pull, git branch, git checkout. Well, it would help if I did the right thing. All right, and here it is. This is the Spring Security Branch. And now all I should have to do is this, and I will get a Jenkins controller running this prototype code. Is that right? That's right. Um, if you don't have a cached version of an earlier, oh, that's not the case. So that's perfect. Right. So, and, and as far as I can tell, I don't think I've got a cached much of anything. But yeah. so what this means is I can conceivably now, if I do a Docker PS, it will show me, yes, I've got Spring Security branch running yeah. a Jenkins controller and an agent. And so I can actually see this if I put that away. And now I open up this thing, we can see Oh my, look at that. Very <laughs> nice. Okay, well done. So I log in as the user admin with the password admin. Yes, we know this is a tutorial, don't complain. And yes, Google password manager tells me that I should change my password because admin, admin is a bad password. Got it. So interesting that that says there's a new version. Yeah, it's considered because uh, oh, ours oh. is a release candidate for 2468. Right. Okay. But that I means. I haven't seen a. A, um, a 2469 has not been no, built yet. Not yet. Right. And, and Basel doesn't build them every, every time there's a new change to Jenkins Core. So that's not a shock. But here we see a, a job running that is, that is doing something simple. Uh, yeah, really simple. <laughs> right. Exactly. But. But the cool thing about this is now I can do things like configure this and I can make my edits. I think I should sleep three seconds because I like prime numbers much better. And this one, I should sleep <laughs> one. And, and it's allowed to do that and it just works. And in fact, if we look at the output, we see that it's did a sleep three and then a sleep one. So, so my edits are working, even though this thing is running Jakarta EE9, but using pipeline plugins that were built for Java EE8. So the compatibility wow. layer that Basel has created is working. Seems to work, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. And okay, this is pipeline graph view. And all the things that you expect to work, just work. So, so we'd love to have other people help with testing. And, and that's, that's a great thing for their help. I assume that this pipeline update will eventually, oh, oh no, this is because the pipeline updates are only happening on the main line, not on this separate branch. Is that right? Uh, no, uh, that's a bug or something. We should have the very last version of each plugin because even have, even uh, though these are not available for an lts yes oh interesting okay well so then so but was... uh, nice nice mix and yes that version that jenkins version is in fact running and i bet we can even see that it's running um let's see it, we could see that it is running jetty 12 12 notice notice Ooh. that jetty 12 not Jetty 10, which is what the, the release Jenkins version uses, Jetty 12. And it's using Servlet API 4. Yes, this is, this is brilliant. Cool. Congratulations, Bruno. Thanks for making that fix. That's very uh, nice. Thank you, Mark. Without your okay. help, it would have been difficult. And here is the how to stop it and remove the stuff. And I need yeah. to do that Let's because do otherwise I'll... <laughs> I'll be blocked from using my computer in other ways. So now it just cleaned itself up and I'm back in, back in business. Great. Thanks. Thanks very much, Bruno, to you for making it that easy to use. And we welcome others to test. Anything you'd like to highlight on that? No, thank you, Mark. Okay. Well, let's call today's meeting done then, unless there's something else we need to discuss.
No, thank you. Okay.